I'm Michael Feinstein. This is Conversations in Music, and that is, of course, Everything's Coming Up Roses from Gypsy, but it wasn't originally Everything's Coming Up Roses. It was from uh, High Button Shoes, but it was cut from High Button Shoes. But I'll tell you about that in a few minutes, because this is part two of my segment or sequence about songs that have had two different lyrics, sometimes more than two. And uh, this is the continuation of that. And before I get to the, the Broadway stuff, Here's a song that um, you'll know probably from the famous Bobby Darin recording. Somewhere, waiting for me, somewhere beyond the sea. lyric by Jack Lawrence, as most of us know it. But actually, that tune, La Mer, was written by Charles Trenet, and it was a French song, and it was originally translated to English for a British review called Together Again, and it had a lyric that was very similar to the one that Jack Lawrence ultimately wrote. And I'll do a little bit of that for you. Sing on Murmuring sea to the lyric, as I said, that Jack Lawrence wrote, so I wonder if uh, he heard that one. Now, here's a lyric that is very, very different from uh, the way it eventually ended up. It's an Academy Award-winning song with music by Johnny Mandel. The shadow of your smile When you Francis Webster, but originally that melody for what became The Shadow of Your Smile is one that Johnny Mandel wrote for another movie called The Americanization of Emily. Johnny Mercer wrote a lyric for it that he later made fun of because he realized that it wasn't so hot. Uh, and this is uh, at least the first part of that lyric. Today I am as sad as I could be be the rain, it must be me, looking for a thing I've yet to find, something that perhaps I've left behind. Kind of clumsy. I don't know what happened with Johnny Mercer, who was one of my favorite lyricists, and he was kind of jealous of the Shadow of Your Smile, because it did win an Academy Award. And when somebody asked him about it later, they said, Johnny, what do you think of Paul Francis Webster's lyric for The Shadow of Your Smile? And he said, uh, sounds to me like a woman with a mustache. <laughs> now, there's a uh, very famous Rogers and Hart song from uh, Babes in Arms. Poor Johnny Wonder sang of Augusta and just her lord of the play. One of the great classic Broadway songs, but originally it was composed in 1934 and 1935 for a movie starring Bing Crosby called Mississippi, and it had a very different lyric. And rather than play it, I'm going to play you uh, on a recording the original demo, bit of the demo, sung by the composer Richard Rodgers, playing and singing. So let's uh, listen to this one, see if I get it queued up. I laugh with Lopez, I stay out with Gomez, but Pablo, you are my heart. I squeeze out Juarez, I tickle Rodriguez, but Pablo, you are my heart. I told Gonzalez, I cook his tamales, his love talk was a work of art. Lopez, Rodriguez, Alvarez, Gonzalez. Well, how could they have possibly cut a song like that? <laughs> oh, 
Oi, that's a real oi. Now, sometimes a song has a second lyric written after the fact for one reason or another, and that's the case of this, uh, this Guys and Dolls song. Originally, as most people know it, I got the horse right here, his name is Paul Revere, and there's a guy who says, if the weather's clear, can do, can do. This guy says the horse can do, etc. Now, it's a, it's a, a fugue uh, in the show, and it's called Fugue for Tin Horns. Uh, but Lesser wrote a popular lyric, one that uh, had nothing to do with the show because he must have thought that the song uh, didn't have chances of becoming a hit in its show lyric, so he rewrote uh, a different version of it, which was first recorded, I think, by Dinah Shore. So I'll just do a little bit of that. And he retitled it Three Cornered Tune because, again, it's a, it's a fugue that plays one part on top of another. It has a tender sound, this little tune I found. I don't know why it's following me Curiosity. Now, one of the great, great torch songs as introduced by Judy Garland in A Star is Born. Johnny Mercer, and Ira Gershwin later said he had no idea that this uh, tune had a previous lyric, and it shows how powerful the combination of lyric and music can be, uh, because with this lyric that Johnny Mercer wrote that is kind of tongue-in-cheek, it does not have the same emotional fervor musically. It changes the character of the tune by the words that are fitted to it. The lyric that Johnny Mercer wrote, I've seen Sequoia, it's really very pretty, the art of Goya and Rockefeller City, but since I saw it, I can't believe my eyes. tune uh, does not have the same power because those lyrics do not lend itself to that. And yet with the man that got away, suddenly it has a majesty to it that is not evident uh, with this lyric. Now in the case of Jerry Herman, he wrote a song that uh, was actually sung, performed, it was published and recorded and it was from his musical review off-Broadway, the early 1960s, called Parade. And the song was called, There is No Tune Like a Show Tune in 2-4. And uh, you may recognize it as having become It's Today from Maine. And uh, clearly Jerry felt that this was a tune that was worth saving and reworking because it is a fantastic tune. And this is a, a very fine lyric, but compared to what he finally uh, it's landed on five years later, it bears no comparison in quality. So, this is the original lyric for that tune. There's no tune as exciting as a show tune in two form. When it's played, you can't just tell. There's footlights everywhere.
songs, well at least three of the songs that were written for Gypsy had earlier lives. One song that was that was cut completely, uh, the song that was cut with the Sondheim lyric was Mama's talking song, Mama's got a plan. Uh, that song originally was written for a, a show called Ruggles of Red Gap, a television special that starred Jane Powell. For a million things I have you to thank. a tiny little reference to Mama's Talking Soft and Rose's turn. Mama's Talking Soft, Mama's Talking Soft. That was a little uh, reprise of Mama's Talking Soft, but it was cut from the show. Well, another song that was originally in uh, Ruggles of Red Gap uh, went like this. I in pursuit of happiness and the Constitution says transformation of music and lyric is the tune that became You'll be swell, you'll be great, you're gonna have the world on a plate. It's such a majestic, wonderful song. But that tune was originally written for a 1947 musical called High Button Shoes, music by Julie Stein, lyrics by Sammy Kahn. And there was a scene in the show uh, where the girl, played by Nanette Febre, had to choose between uh, a football player and a traveling salesman. And uh, she's trying to make up her mind which one to choose. So this is the lyric that, uh, that Sammy wrote. I'm betwixt and between Got to make my mind up which way to lean Is it stuck? Is it gone? Is it true? the tune. I'm betwixt and between. It makes the tune namby-pamby, but with Sondheim's lyric, you'll be swell, you'll be great, gonna have the world on the plate. Starting here, starting now, everything's gonna be the roses. So there we are. Thank goodness that uh, Julie saved that tune and used it in Gypsy. Okay, so, a song that you will know from The Music Man. Oh, the wells far away and in the coming down the street, oh please let it be for me. Oh, the wells far away and in the coming down the street, I sure wish I knew what it could be. One of the great moments in The Music Man. 
And uh, Meredith Wilson wrote that tune for the Music Man, but originally it was called the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. And I'm going to play you a little bit of Meredith Wilson's vocal demo of that song because it again shows that while it's a perfectly good tune and works quite well, the magic of what he later settled on, uh, there's no comparison to that. So this is an excerpt of Meredith Wilson singing the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina. Oh yes, the Blue Ridge Mountains are in North Carolina, Lina, that's where my heart belongs. Oh yes, the Blue Ridge Mountains are in North Carolina, Lina, never mind them other famous songs. Now if you're skeptical, I recommend you follow her. The trail at Lonesome Pine will lead you to You'll find yourself to hoops and a holler From little old North Carolina where the ridge is blue, blue, blue Oh yes, the Blue Ridge Mountains back in Oh, Virginia, Jenny, start in the heart of North Carolina And if you can't locate a back in Oh, Virginia, Jenny, look In this heart This song is one that uh, is so ubiquitous that it's probably uh, among the best known theater songs ever created, in music by Charles Strauss, lyrics by Martin Charman. And that tune, which of course was used in Annie, originally was used in a short film, a seven or eight minute film, which was scored by Charles Strauss, for which he wrote the background music as well as two vocal pieces. And he wrote a song. Uh, called Replay, because this little film was called Replay, and the film was about the generation gap, about how elders perceived at that time the hippie generation and vice versa. And the song was about how things are very different now, but are they really? And Charles Strauss uh, uh, wrote this lyric as well as, as the tune. So let's see if I can get through this. I transcribed it off of the soundtrack of the film. Let's see if I can do this. the two different lyrics. I'm actually going to sing you a lyric to a tune by Irving Berlin that uh, is quite familiar. It's There's No Business Like Show Business, which Irving Berlin wrote for Annie Get Your Gun. And this is not a lyric written for a different project, but it's actually a lyric that he wrote for Annie Get Your Gun. And these are extra lyrics for this very, very familiar song. The reason I wish to sing them for you is because they don't exist anywhere other than this lyric sheet that I have. They're not in the book, The Complete Lyrics of Irving Berlin, and so they essentially have never been heard before. And I find that 
rather perplexing because they are among Irving Berlin's finest lyrics, as, as you shall hear. And if you're wondering where I found these lyrics, they came from a mass of papers I bought from the estate of a songwriter named Sammy Lerner. And he somehow must have gotten those lyrics from Irving Berlin because the type sheet is Irving Berlin's own type sheet. So here are some unknown lyrics for There's No Business Like Show Business. <laughs> Oh, no. 